hey what's going on everybody back with another how to today we're going to be doing an ac service on this 2014 nissan altima 2.5 so the priority behind this job is replacing the ac compressor but we also are going to be replacing the condenser um, the expansion valves receiver dryer accumulator all the above so this should fall in line with any fifth gen Altima, which is 2013 to 2018. So let's get into it now. All right, guys, under the hood here, as you can see. So the reason we are doing this job is the AC compressor, unfortunately, locked up and as you can see there is no belt on there currently and that is because i cut the belt with a razor blade to verify that was the issue so um, the car has been making a uh, noise for a little bit um, i've been putting this off i knew it was bad um, it didn't sound horrible it was just loud the belt drive was loud so when it ran it just sounded louder than it typically normally should it wasn't squealing it wasn't making any ridiculous noises it just had a loud sound from the belt drive and you could tell that it was coming from the ac compressor and to verify prior i've been down um you know took the splash guard off and got around the ac compressor and you can hear it was coming right from there so the ac compressor mechanically failed and it locked up now what this issue caused was a no start on this car believe it or not so um this is my girlfriend's car she drove it about an hour to work got to work um you know worked all day came out went to start the car it wouldn't start um what happened was it was sounding like a bad starter so it was just making a roo, roo. like you know sorry for my crude noises here but that's essentially what it was doing it sounded like a uh starter trying to engage that couldn't but what it came to be was the ac compressor was locked it wasn't allowing the crank or anything over here to turn and the belt was essentially melted and welded to the compressor from um you know being hot and uh locking up so essentially it failed on her drive to work and the momentum kept her going to get to work but once it uh you know cooled down and you know she let it sit all day it locked up completely and it created a no start condition because the crank and the belt drive could not turn allowing this motor to turn over when it was being engaged by the starter so that is the issue that happened to this vehicle the ac compressor has been slowly failing i know about it but i put it off longer than i should so if you're watching this and you got you know a noise coming from your ac compressor just go ahead and get it done because it sounded it didn't sound too bad to me but uh obviously i didn't have the time that we thought we had with it and it failed on a you know a trip essentially because she couldn't get home from work and i had to have my buddy tow it and he's a you know master tech and he also you know was the one to help me you know figure this out because when we got it back here we looked it over cut the belt and you know we determined that it was indeed the ac compressor because as soon as we cut that belt you can start the car um it will start off the battery and run for you know a few seconds a minute whatever so uh once the belt was cut started right up so that's how we verified the no start condition you can actually see if you know get in there and which we'll review once we get down there you can see that the ac compressor is bad because you know there's a ton of like hot rust which i'll show you when we get down there but you know once the belt was cut started right up had no issues and that frozen locked up compressor is what caused the no start issue so what we are going to be doing is replacing the ac compressor um the condenser and um you know a few of the associated components to do you know the best ac service we can do but other than that guys so let's go ahead and get into doing the job all right guys let's go ahead and get into the job now i'm just going to warn you right now this is going to be a very long video as i'm not only going to be doing the compressor i'm going to be doing the condenser as well which is going to involve taking off the front bumper so there's a lot of disassembly that needs to happen here in order to get to all these associated components and get them replaced correctly all right so heads up just want you to know now uh, got the front end in the air on jack stands so both sides are on jack stands and if you're curious on how to get the fifth gen ultima 
safely on jack stands i do have a video that i'll leave in the description below so i will leave a link to get your fifth gen ultima safely on jack stands so we definitely need the front end in the air in order to get to all these components and get everything off that we need to get off so now that we are set up with the front end jacked in the air try to get it as high as you can safely on jack stands we're going to go ahead and get into the disassembly all right guys we are here on the passenger side as i mentioned the vehicle is jacked in the air first thing we have to do is remove our wheel and that's in order to gain access to the drive belt and everything associated in that area with the ac compressor so we're going to go ahead and get this wheel off the lug nuts are a 21 mil so i have a 21 mil here on an impact i'm just going to go ahead and fire all five of these right out all right guys wheel is off next step here is going to remove this inner splash guard here now if you're familiar with doing oil changes on these cars you'll know what this panel is because the oil filter is directly behind it but it's held in with five clips we have one two three four and there is a fifth one on the bottom right there okay so we're just going to take a panel popper and i'm going to pop all five of these push clips right out they're very simple just get behind it and just pop it right out and I want to do that for the remaining four. All right, guys, as you can see, we have our splash guard off. So now to gain better access to the belt drive and the AC compressor, what we're going to need to do is peel our inner fender liner here out. Now we don't have to take the entire thing out. I'm going to remove it to about center here with the strut. So what we need to do is just pop out that clip. That's one, two, and then three and there's some clips and screws on the bottom which we'll review so we're just going to remove these three clips and then we're going to go underneath and remove the necessary components at the front underneath here so let's get these three clips out right here all right guys we are now under the car so if you look here we are under the splash guard under the front bumper and the remaining things to remove this inner fender liner is we have three Phillips screws retaining the bumper to the fender liner and we have one more clip right there just as the other three that we already removed so I'm going to go ahead and pop this clip out so we'll get that out and now we just have to get these three Phillips out so we're just going to zip these out with the impact you can use a screwdriver impact drill whatever works for you And there we go guys our inner fender liner here is now free and you can see i popped it out and now what we're going to do is get up get back into the wheel well and we'll pull it back and i'll show you where we're going to put it all right so we have everything retaining the front half of this fender liner here removed so literally just peel it out of the front bumper all right and as you can see it's hanging so what i'm going to do is pull it back gently and we're just going to ease it around into behind the rotor and that way oh, a little stuck there there we go and that way it keeps it out of our workway and we don't actually have to remove the entire fender liner okay so now we have a lot better access here to the compressor and to our uh belt drive all right so i'm just going to review a little bit here with you guys real quick now that we have some access here now if you can see i don't know if you see all that like uh brownie ready maroony whatever color you want to deem it all over the subframe there and around it that's how you know this got hot that hot rust that you know gets glowing red almost that is a pure sign of something that was really hot and either locked up or burned up or something of that nature so that's how we know this compressor was also failing you can kind of even see it around it and let's take it to the compressor that thing is stiff as a brick guys <laughs> super locked up that thing is not moving so yes guys we have a completely locked up ac compressor all right so as you can see the belt is off like i mentioned in the beginning of the video we cut it off to diagnose this to ensure uh you know the ac compressor was the culprit which it was so you know obviously if you still have the belt on the belt is going to have to be removed and even though the belt isn't on here i'll show you what you need to do i'm going to have to move the tensioner anyway for when i put the new belt on here so we'll get into that now and i'll show you how to get this belt off so if you look right there 
that pulley dead center is your belt tensioner. Now, if you look right above that, let's see if I can get the light in there for you, right there, that bolt right above the tensioner, that is a 17 mil, okay? So that is how you relieve the tension on the tensioner, okay? And if we look to the right of that pulley, you'll see those two holes right there. And those two holes are what we essentially want to align. And I'm going to push a 3 Allen key through that. And that's going to lock the tensioner into that position. Okay. So we're essentially just going to be relieving the tension with the 17 mil. And then we're going to push our 3 16 Allen key right through those two holes to lock that tensioner in place. All right, guys, I hope that's a good camera angle for you. It's a little rough here but what i have here is a small 3 8 drive breaker bar with a regular 3 8 drive 17 mil socket on the end of the breaker bar we're going to get that over the 17 mil on top of the tensioner all right so i am locked in and what we are going to be doing is turning this clockwise as if we were tightening it all right so towards the front of the car so we are turning it clockwise that is going to align those two holes that i mentioned and then we could push our allen key in i actually don't like where the breaker bar was i'm gonna get it over here more so i have a little bit better angle and then get in on it to lock this allen key in so if you can see i got that perfectly aligned and i can just push that allen key in and i can take that off and that tensioner is locked in position from that 3 16 Allen key. All right, so if your belt was on, now that you have this locked in with the 3 16 Allen, you can pull the belt off, pull it back, whatever you want to do. If you had a compressor lock up, replace the belt. Um, this is also just a good time to replace the belt in general. So I would say consider replacing the belt, but solely up to you. But obviously we're going to be putting a new belt on. As I told you, I cut the last one, so... Here we go, you would be removing the belt, and now we can get into the next step. All right, guys, so our next step here is removing this lower splash guard that connects the bumper to the subframe. So let me see if I can get you a decent shot of it. It's this right here. It is held in with 10 push clips and five 10 mil bolts lining the front of the bumper, okay? Now, we already removed one of the 10 push clips here, so we just have to remove the other nine and then remove our five 10 mils. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the same panel popper we've been using, pop off the remaining nine push clips and then we'll get those 10 mils out. All right guys, I got all 10 of the clips retaining this front splash guard out. Now we have five 10 mils, so let's have a 10 mil on impact. You can use whatever tool that you please, but I'm just gonna fire these all right out. And then that should, Drop our uh, front splash guard here. Yep. This last bolt out here in the first one I did. I it off a hair more and there we go guys. That thing is completely off. All right guys, splash guard is removed. And what I did to not lose any of these precious 10 mils is I put them right back in the bumper so all five I just lightly screwed back in so we don't lose them. I have the splash guard there to the side with all the associated clips in there so we stay organized. So now we got a little better view here of our AC compressor. You can see those lower mounting bolts. So we're getting there. We're about, you know, full access to the compressor. Um, we're just going to go up top under the hood to gain final access to this and then we can go ahead and get this bad boy off. All right, so we are back under the hood here and if I just, you know, shine the light down there, you can see the AC line. We can get a little view of our compressor, but if we're just looking right here in this general area, there's not much room to work. So being that is the case, we need to remove this core support cover and this front air box right here. So it's pretty simple. This is held in with some clips. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna go ahead and pop those off, get the cover off, and then we'll get this out. All right, guys, same thing we've been doing, popping out clips. So there's one, two, three, four. And I'm just gonna keep on working my way around. All right, all eight clips removed, and it should just lift right off once you have them all out. So. 
we have the core support cover off and now we can go ahead and remove this front air duct here all right guys so front air duct here front air box whatever you want to call it, it's held in with 10 mil so 10 mil here 10 mil here just using the impact you can use any tool of your choice socket wrench drill whatever you prefer use the impact so we got both 10 mils out and now this should lift up and out and we could sneak that out of our way and now we have a lot more room for activities here and we have a lot better access to the compressor here from the top all right so now that we have more room here and access to the top of the compressor we could go ahead and remove the two ac lines here so one and two connecting to the compressor now the refrigerant in this system has already been evacuated so there's no refrigerant in here so make sure you know you get it evacuated and get the refrigerant out before you disconnect the line because it's going to come spraying out like a can of uh you know keyboard computer spray something like that is how it's going to come piling out and shooting out so uh, make sure you evacuate it so if you see here that little cylinder i'm flashing the flashlight on that top hose you can see a 10 mil next to it all right that is our low pressure flexible hose so that is held in with a 10 mil right there on top of the uh compressor so what we're going to do is go ahead and get that hose out now i have a 10 mil here on a 12 inch extension so i have a foot long extension here on my impact it's just the right length to get on top of that 10 mil right here from the top so should be able to get that thing right on out of there so what i'm going to do is grab a magnet i'm going to get that 10 out and then we'll pop that flexible hose right out of the compressor all right guys i just have a long magnet tool I'm going to get that 10 right out. So there is the 10. I'm going to safely put that to the side. And now that hose should pop out. Should. She's still in there pretty good. And there we go. Jeez. All right, that o-ring definitely had a good seal there. But as you can see, we have that hose popped out. I can move that slightly to the side here, let that fall. And now, if you look, we have better access to the high side. So that is the high pressure flexible hose that we see now. And that is the same deal that is held in with a 10 mil as well. So I'm gonna use the same setup I just used. This quarter drive foot long extension here with the 10 mil. All right, got that thing out actually came out with my socket look at that so i'm gonna put that safely to the side as well and now we just have to pull that hose out see how much it's gonna fight here not too bad i feel like it yeah came out pretty easy so we have both hoses both flexible hoses now right out of the compressor all right guys so as you saw we got both of our flexible hoses out of the way and removed from the compressor so now we have these two harnesses here which are plugged in so there's this black one here simply just press it in with your thumb and relieve it and then you have the one here on the top the gray one the light gray one it's the same deal it's a little tighter here let's see if i can press on it all right guys my finger was not getting in there at the right angle to go ahead and pop that uh, gray harness out so i just have a flat head if we press down on the tab so i'm pressing down on it pulling it back popped it right out so literally just took the flat head pressed it on the tab pulled back and got it right out all right so both harnesses now are disconnected from the compressor and if we can I think I could stuff it right here in between the alternator harness and the oil dipstick. So there we go, out of our way, and we have a little bit better access now to get in there and get everything out. All right, guys, so we got those harnesses up and out of our way. One thing I want to mention real quick that I didn't mention when we took these hoses off, this right here is an insert from the Nissan factory service manual from the uh, workflow of doing this job for the AC compressor on this particular car. As you can see, it recommends capping or putting something in or over the uh, AC line, the hoses, once you disconnect them from the um, AC compressor in order to keep air out of the system. So, um, you know, it's kind of hard not to let any air get in them, obviously, but I just put a rolled up paper towel, if you can see, in each of these. So I just stuffed it in there nice and tight. It'd be hard to see on both of them, but both of them are stuffed nice and tight with a uh, paper towel. So just wanted to mention that now that we have everything essentially disconnected from up here we can go ahead and get into removing the mounting bolts and getting this bad boy uh off and out 
all right guys we are back under the car all right so the ac compressor is held in with four uh 12 mil mounting bolts okay so there's four two on the bottom two on the top 12 mil we're going to start with the two here on the bottom remove these get them out and you know separate it from the block and then we'll get the two from the top all right so we're going to go ahead and get a ratchet on those and get those 12 mils all out so what i have here is a 12 mil wrench Let's see if i can get on this and break it free and then once i got it free i'm gonna go ahead and try to uh get it off with a ratcheting wrench now these things are pretty rust welded i might even be pulling a torch out on these i'm gonna say that one is whoo that one's in there Let's see about this one. Oh yeah yeah guys these are oh man they are on there <laughs> all right let me uh let me reevaluate this and uh i'll get back with you in a second all right guys as you just saw that thing was pretty on there i was putting some good force on it and it was not budging so um ac compressor mounting bolts like this can be good for breaking and i'm not having one of these break on my watch today so i have a uh small mat torch here propane torch mat whatever you know nothing crazy not acetylene just a little torch here what I want to do is lightly just take the tip of this and let it heat up that bolt, all right? I'm just keeping it on the head of the bolt. I'm not letting it hit anything else. We're not hitting any harnesses, no rubber. It's perfectly fine to do this. Just obviously use your brain and be careful, all right? So um, we're going to let this heat up for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. And then hopefully I can get this thing to budge. So I'll check back in once I got this warmed up here all right guys i heated this one up for about a minute maybe a minute and a half let's see if we got any budging now because she wasn't even thinking about it before oh man is she still not oh yeah she is there we go yeah guys he is your best friend i'm telling you anytime i got a stubborn bolt like this pull out the propane torch save you a, a headache of a broken bolt man I'm telling you every time and there we go guys that seems fine i'm going to put this ratcheting wrench on here let's see here yeah it feels perfect just needed some heat guys so i'm gonna back this one out and then we'll get the other one all right guys about got this bolt out and i didn't even warm it up enough that it's burning me like i got my glove on and i can touch it look perfect bolt out all right so for anybody's afraid to use heat i just grabbed that with a nine mil glove and was perfectly fine so we got that one out we're going to do the same thing for this one we're going to heat it up a bit crack it loose now we do got to be a little bit more careful because there is a harness here even though it's kind of irrelevant that a harness is actually part of the compressor so we are going to get a new one of these harnesses that come with the new compressor it just connects here to the top of the compressor it's nothing fancy but um you know obviously still want to tread carefully and you know you don't want to burn stuff that you don't have to but um even if you happen to mess up that comes with the new one so no worries but we're gonna get that one warmed up and then we're gonna do the same thing and crack that thing loose all right guys it's coming right directly underneath of it like this heat that up for about the same fr time frame minute minute and a half and then we'll uh, break this one loose as well i think i got enough room to sneak a ratchet on this one let's see yep that's all i needed just a little bit of extra leverage all right there we go guys got that one loose just needed some heat and a little extra leverage with my extendable 3 8 drive. Let's get on this one now with a ratcheting wrench and we'll get that backed out. And then once this thing's out, we'll have both of these lower 12 mil mounting bolts removed. All right, guys, so we are back under the hood. As you can see, we're looking down at the compressor now to get those top two mounting bolts. Um, don't think I'm going to be using heat on these. This is a very tight area. It's a lot more risky to probably use heat. And this inner one at least doesn't look as corroded as the two bottom ones did. Uh, that top one right here might be a little, uh, the one closest to the uh, passenger side might be on there. But what I have here is my extendable 3-8 drive ratchet with the 12 mil on it. Let's get on this and see if we can, uh, yeah, got it. All right, that one's broken loose. Just dropped the wrench like an idiot, but I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to see if we can get on the other side and get that uh, get that one broken loose as well. All right, guys, I am on this other one here. Let's see if it's uh, going to allow us to break it free because she is rather corroded. She broke free, though. 
Awesome. Looks a bit rusty there in the center of the uh, bolt, but looks like she uh, she wasn't terribly corroded where it was uh, threaded in. So there we go, guys. Both of these now are uh, free. I'm gonna get this outer one out first, and then we're gonna get that um, inner one out, and then hopefully we can go ahead and work on sneaking this bad boy out. All right, guys, I got this one here out all right so i'm just gonna put this to the side and then we're gonna work out this other one and we'll have all four of our 12 mils out all right guys one thing i want to note that i just did which you probably can't see is i put a jack stand underneath of this from the bottom just so it's supporting it and then i can back this last bolt out without uh it getting all flimsy and flying all over the place on me so should be a lot easier with that stability from the jack stand you don't have to do that, but I think it makes it easier, and that's why I did it. it. Took two seconds to put one underneath of there. So, jack stain underneath of it. Let's see if we can get this last bolt out. All right, guys. It is falling, as you can see, but that jack stain is kind of holding it in place. Just drop the bolt, but let me grab that, and we have all four of our bolts out. All right. Now it's just about getting this thing out so let's see if we can maneuver it on out all right guys you can get a little bit better view here now of our compressor completely unmounted from the block you can see the jack stand right there kind of pressing up um, on the bottom of it up against the subframe now we do have this power steering line here so this aluminum line into this rubber line it's a power steering line it is blocking us from really getting this thing out because we're trying to sneak it out from right here um, this is probably going to be the least fun part of this whole project is trying to sneak this thing out in these tight spots, but I think we can do it. So um, you can take a panel popper under this, should pop it out. These things are, might be dry rotted, they might be broken or they might break on you. Just be really careful and tread lightly with them because they're prone to breaking. All right, so got this thing moved here. Um, might be able to finagle it around there, but let me uh, so I'm gonna double check here and make sure we're good and see if we can sneak that thing out. All right, guys, I'm going to do one more thing here to give that power steering line as much freedom as possible. So if you see right there, that is where the line is coming up from the subframe and that, you know, off white, you know, brownie uh, clamp right there. It's retaining it right there to the frame so it's really just a clip and i'm not going to have to get in here but you're going to take a flathead go under it and pop it up i can't really do it with my hand in the space with the camera here but um we're going to try to pop that out and that'll give that hose a little bit more free play to move around all right guys i think i got you in an okay position where maybe you can see this but i'm just pressing up on this and should free it up hmm. Yep, see, it's not hard. You press up on it with a flathead, and then you should be able to pull it back and out. And now, look, I have even more free play on that power steering line, all right? All right, guys, let's see what we got here. How much of a bear this is gonna be. It looks like it's gonna be a, a grizzly bear. But let's see. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh oh, I spoke too soon. You can hear the excitement in my voice because it's coming out here. Let's see. Ah, uh, maybe not. I don't know how we're going to get it back in. Oh, uh, come on. I got it, guys. Look at that. Got the compressor fully removed. So, just really had to maneuver and finagle it around this uh, power steering line and. We're good. All right, guys, AC compressor is out. You can see she was definitely bad. Clutch is halfway hanging off of the pulley here. Thing isn't moving for anything. That thing is frozen solid, so definitely no bueno. All right. You can see some of that rust that, you know, red rusts right there which is what i was referring to so our compressor is off now i am also doing the condenser on this job so um you know we just went through the steps for removing just 
the AC compressor. Technically, most of the time when you do an AC compressor, um, you should replace associated parts like the condenser and lines and so on and so forth. Even for certain ones, um, you know, they require you um, when purchasing the compressor to buy the condenser and all that just to have an uh, active warranty on the compressor. So some compressors won't even give you a warranty unless, you know, you have proof that you bought a condenser with the job. So, um, you know, I'm going to play an insert here um, from the car wizard who is actually a really good mechanic. He probably has one of the most reputable shops in America. Um, and he has a great YouTube channel. I would suggest subscribing to him. He always has uh, cool cars with a lot of cool insight. So um, I've even learned stuff from him here and there, picking up some of his knowledge. So, you know, you can always learn and, you know, see other hacks and things like that. So this is an insert from his channel in regard to doing an AC compressor and everything associated with the job. If you get under your car and you turn it and it's just, uh, uh, and it's locked up, your compressor is shot. It's going to require new condenser, new compressor, receiver dryer, and flush the entire system. If you do not replace all those components, they won't even cover the warranty on the new parts you're putting on your car. New condensers, you get small debris inside them. They're so small these days, you can't flush it out. So you put a new compressor on and call it good, and a small piece of debris breaks loose from the condenser and floats around in the system and finally makes its way to your brand new compressor and scores it up and destroys it. All right guys, so as you can see from that insert that typically when a compressor locks up, it can potentially throw medical particles through the entire AC system, through the lines, uh, condenser, all of the above. So with that in mind, I haven't seen anything yet just by looking at the end of the line down there and in looking in the inside of this compressor, but I'm going to pull off this top line and we are just gonna inspect it to see if we have any you know metal particles or anything that looks like it doesn't belong inside this line so um i already got it capped off here with the paper towel like i showed you you can see the lines right here it's all but free it's just being held in with a 10 mil right there so let's fire that out with a 10 mil and let's inspect this line all right guys 10 mil got that back out let's go ahead and get that guy on out of there go should pop up yep and now we can free this line up we're a hair caught here around the alternator let me see if i can finagle her out yep there it is guys so what we're going to do real quick is we're going to look at this and then we're going to cap it off now let's see here i'll put a flashlight in there with you guys and see if we can see anything and then i'm going to stick my finger in there and see if we can find any shavings all right just looking inside might be hard for you to see but looks pretty clean let me stick my finger in there so my pinky is clean i see nothing it's gonna be hard to tell with that that light but i see no shavings i see no shavings coming out of this I'm going to check the other end here where I shoved the paper towel in there. And of course, we're going to be replacing all these O-rings, guys, so don't even question that. Nope, just refrigerant. There's some a little bit of residue from the refrigerant, but I don't see any shavings, guys. I think we're good as far as the shavings are concerned. I don't think uh, we got that unlucky. I'm still replacing the condenser, but I mean, these lines are like 70 and like 170 from nissan and i really would only want to buy these from nissan so um since we don't have anything contaminated in them i'm keeping them and reusing them all right and you can see we actually got some uh refrigerant dripping out and if we let's since that's happening let's take a look at it I wasn't anticipating that but now it looks good i don't see anything shiny in it i'm kind of glad that happened even though it's made a mess on my driveway now but it looks good guys so what i'm going to do is shove another paper towel in this and we're just going to keep this off for now until we put this back in and we'll put the new o-rings and all that on so looks good i don't think we have any issues as far as um metal shavings in fact we'll even uh i'll one up it real quick we're going to go ahead and look inside this compressor i checked myself but i didn't do it on camera so if we look here eh, maybe there's something in here actually this is dirt so yeah guys we are good this is dirt in there from this little i don't know if you can see all the dirt right there and that 
little uh, valley. This is all dirt. And that's what kind of got in there. But yeah, guys, no, no foreign particles it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and cap that line off right there. And I'm going to cap it off on the uh, engine side too. So I'm going to go ahead and put a cap in that as well. And, you know, we should be good as far as um, this line and the AC compressor is concerned. All right, guys. So now that our compressor is removed and everything involving the compressor we've already reviewed and went over and is done, we are going to get into the condenser now. So um, we do have to remove the front bumper in order to gain access to the condenser. Now, we're already, you know, th you know, quarter way, halfway there because we removed the bottom splash guard, which retains it to the subframe. We removed the fender liner here, which gains access to the 10 mil here. So we've already made some progress as far as getting it off. So what we're going to do is essentially just pick up from where we are. So we're going to start right here. 10 mil right there. I just got a 10 mil on the impact. Use any tool of your choice. All right. Got that out. So there is our bumper 10 mil that will allow this bumper to pop out here. So this should just pull out here from the uh, fender here. Let me try to do it with two hands with some stability because she is not she has not been off in a while there we go see how that pops right out so we got that popped off right there and now what we're going to do is go to the other side and get that side popped off as well all right guys we are on the driver's side here so now if we come underneath it's the same thing as the other side. We already had these three Phillips uh, out from pulling the fender liner back. So we essentially just have to do the same thing on this side now in order to free up the inner fender liner from the bumper. So three Phillips, we just have to fire those out. We already got the clip removed. So once these three Phillips are out, we can pull this back similar to how we did on the other side. We're just gonna pull it to right here though, up against the wheel, and then that'll free this up from the bumper. All right, so same thing as we did on the other side. I just have an impact. You can use a screwdriver, drill, whatever tool of your choice, but got that one. We're gonna get the middle one here. Out, one here on the corner. Out, and now our fender liner here is free from the bumper, okay? So now we can just pull it out up to here all right and now we can get to the 10 mil like we just did on the other side all right so same thing as the other side i just showed you so i'm just going to sneak in on that with the impact got it and now we can pop this side of the bumper out as well and now we have the bumper almost free all right guys back up under the hood the last thing holding in this bumper are these 10 mils and these all right guys there is two more bolts we got to remove here so if you pull back this uh you know little carpeting style covering there is a 10 mil right there it's like a retainer uh mount basically so i'm just going to approach this with a ratcheting wrench do this for both sides and then the bumper will be all but free All right, guys, once you have that 10 mil out, it should allow you to pull this out. And this whole bracketry right here that aligns with the uh, bumper holes here should pull out. So I just took the other side out as well. The one last thing we need to disconnect here is just the uh, plastic clip retaining the uh, washer reservoir here because it's attached to that bumper bracket that is coming out uh, with the bumper. So got that out. Just got to get this guy out here. And that is now separated and good to go. There we go, guys. Now the only thing left here is you're going to have the harnesses down here for the signal light and the uh, fog light. So just disconnect those, press the tabs in, you know, just like any harness and free them up and then you'll be good to go. All right, guys, there we go. Bumper is off all right guys so we got that front bumper cover off and now you can see we got access to the condenser here so this thing slides up and out so it's really uh retained in with some clips let me get a light here it's retained in right there and this side it's actually broken because this car was in a front end accident somebody hit this car and they didn't replace it so you can see it just slides right out because that retainer clamp isn't holding it in but for that to slide out, this upper brace 
right here this core support brace that i'm shining the light on has to come out it's held in with some 10 mil so let's fire that out and that will allow us to pull this condenser up and out all right guys so we got the 10 mil here we got the 10 mil here we got to get out of our way but we also got to loosen this one to separate it from that bracket all right and then this one on the other corner so we're going to take all four of these out and that'll free this whole uh bracket out all right guys literally just let this fall down and hang it does have the horn harnesses and wires you know associated running on it so clearly just lift it off and back this is actually uh i thought it was mounted here so we're just gonna have to fire these two tens out as well um just to get this to come off as well and we'll just let that hang so we got the 10 mil here and then the one on the other side all right we got both of those out should be able to pull them there we go guys we can just let this uh sit back here trying not to let it puncture the condenser there even though it really doesn't matter but <laughs> there we go guys that is fully removed all right guys we got that bracketry out really the last thing here that's you know preventing this from sliding up really is just this right here it's just a little piece of plastic for the air duct so it's just got two plastic clips retaining it go ahead and pop these out one get this other one here there we go and there it is guys off all right so just a couple more things here and then we should be able to lift this condenser out so we do have the lines here going in so it's a 10 mil as well i got a 10 mil on an impact should be able to fire that right out and then we can disconnect these lines here all right from the condenser all right guys i'm gonna lightly pry on this and see if i can get it to separate because it really doesn't want to there we go all right so just needed a little bit of persuasion all right guys we got that line disconnected now on the opposing side driver's side we just have this harness all right we're just going to press that in and hopefully pop that thing off i think i'm going to use a flat head on that as well just to make it easy to pop off all right so i'm just going to press on the tab with the flat head should be able to press it in enough to pull that right up yep there we go guys all right guys so i'm thinking this thing should be about fully free um i think we can maneuver this thing out here it's a little tight <laughs> it's just falling all over the place but uh i'm just gonna have to move it around that bracket and uh there we go actually i can just drop it through the bottom literally all right well that was an easy way so literally just fell right out to the bottom guys so there we go got it removed good to go all right guys the condenser is out so virtually we have you know everything we're going to be replacing out i'm also going to remove the uh high pressure hose here so um you know you can see there is a little uh hard line going from there to our flexible uh high pressure line it's just held in right here with a 10 mil so i'm gonna sneak on that with my impact oh. there it is we got that bolt out 10 mil all right so this is what the high pressure hose is mounting into going to the condenser and now we're going to see if we can go ahead and get this thing separated all right it's probably going to be tight but i think we can maneuver her off and we want to do this for the o-ring i'm pulling this out of my way i'm going to see if i can maybe pry this thing up because she doesn't want to come out there we go there it's coming there we go separated guys all right guys just want to note that every line that i have separated i do have capped i just put paper towel stuffed in there so doing our best to keep them uh you know clean you know prevent air from getting in there or any contaminants so that is good to go other than that this is fully disassembled this is as far as i'm going doing the condenser and the compressor i am not going to be doing new lines as i showed you earlier in the video that these you know don't appear to have anything uh foreign or contaminants in there if i put my pinky in here um there's literally nothing on here so looks really good i don't see any issues with these hoses you can get these you know cheap you know the high and the low both sides probably for about 20 30 bucks but 
Um, if I was going to replace them, I would probably want to go OEM with the Nissans and they're like 70 for one and like 170 for the other. So I'm not doing that. These seem fine. We're keeping these hoses. So we are good to go. We're just replacing with a new compressor, new condenser, and, you know, replacing all our associated O-rings and then putting it back together, guys. So we are fully disassembled. Let's go ahead and review what we got and get into the installation. All right, guys, so here is everything new. Basically in a nutshell is all here. We got our condenser, we got the new compressor, O-rings, new belt. There is our old hoses, which we're gonna be installing new O-rings on. So one thing I do wanna note, if you get a new compressor, um, you know, for this particular car, the base model and the S model apparently have a different one than the SL or the SV. This car in particular is an SL. So, um, you know, the SL and SV have a certain compressor, the S and the base have different, okay? So just make sure you note that. Um, here is the compressor part number, all right? I'm actually going to put um, on the screen here, I bought the entire component kit from Rock Auto. Um, this is the UAC brand. I did a little bit of research. It seems like there's been, you know, a lot of people who've went with these UACs, uh, you know, component kits with the condenser and new compressor. And, you know, most people seem to have pretty good experiences with them from Rock Auto. So it's a good price. Um, it was 440 shipped for all this for me. That's including the belt. So belt compressor condenser um you know all that was 440 dollars shipped that's what i paid here is the part number so this is the component kit from uac this is the one that i'm going to be installing all right so that is what we're utilizing so let's get into reviewing the install and everything we need to do here so of course one of the things we're going to have to do is replace all the o-rings i got an o-ring kit here i also got an assorted o-rings that came with the uh, ac kit here from uac those two came with the compressor so um we're going to us put our associated o-rings on each thing and of course we're also going to have to uh you know review the oil uh you know and all that for the um ac compressor the pag oil all right so i'm going to go ahead and get some of these o-rings done i'm just going to knock out all the o-rings so i'll go over a couple of them with you so you get the idea of what to do and then i'm just going to go ahead and replace them all and then from there we'll review oiling the compressor and then you know we'll get into the installation all right guys you can see i got the high pressure flexible hose here we're going to use this as an example for the replacement of the o-rings okay so what we're going to do is take off the existing black o-ring on here so i have the paper towel shoved in there i'm just going to make sure it's in there nice and tight so i don't mess it up or accidentally push it in or pull it out all right and i have a pick tool here so this is just a snap-on pick get these anywhere auto parts store harbor freight wherever so what i'm going to do is get under it and i'm under it i can put my thumb on it and now i can roll it off the edge here all right so there we go here is the o-ring okay so what i'm going to do is see if we can find the corresponding o-ring here in our lovely assortment here and then we're just going to install that right on there all right guys so i think i found a match here and all this assortment of o-rings they're about the same thickness this one might look just the smallest hair bigger but i think it's just from being old and aged and pulled apart but i mean they really are about the same all right so this should be perfectly fine it's a nice thick o-ring okay so all right so i'm gonna make sure my paper towel is back in here because i kind of pulled it out with the um o-ring coming off and what we're going to do is just slowly pop that right back over all right so there we go that looks really good now of course we are going to oil these and lubricate them before we install them and put them in but right now we're just simply taking the old ones off and putting the new ones in so got that end done i'm going to do the same thing for this end so i'm going to pop this one off and like i mentioned i'm not going to you know replace every o-ring on camera with you guys i mean once you see one or two done you should have the gist of what we're doing here and, you know, I'm just going to go through each associated O-ring, whether it be off or on the car, get them replaced. But I do want to let you guys, you know, get a little visual here of what the process is like. Just hit the camera here. But this one looks about the same size as the other one. 
And since that is the case, I should be able to grab another one, which is exactly the same as the one that I just had. So there we go. I go ahead and get that one installed as well. And we'll have this uh, hose here all O-ringed up. All right, guys, we're just simply going to push it right over just like we did the first time. Bang, there it is. So both sides of this hose have our new green AC O-rings on there. They look good. And we are good to go. I want to go ahead and go through the rest of the O-rings and we're going to get all these replaced. All right, so we got all the O-rings that we have disconnected replaced. So we got the two here, the one there, and over here on our high pressure and low pressure line, we got them all replaced. So we are good, all replaced with new green O-rings. Just want to note that this condenser did come with that line right here. So I'm just going to disconnect this here when we go to install it. So just wanted to note that, that this is... You know did include that all right now we're going to get into everybody's favorite subject when it comes to ac compressor replacement and that is oiling the new compressor all right so there's a lot of opinions procedures and you know things you can find regarding oiling a new compressor across the internet now this is a insert first from the factory service manual this is the capacity so if you look here this is the capacity it's noting 5.1 fluid ounces okay so that is the oil capacity for the compressor so you know this is very particular so really we should try to get that as perfect as possible so the total amount of oil that we want in the system is 5.1 us fluid ounces okay now this is the oiling procedure from the nissan factory service manual for this car i felt like i would include it although i am not going to be doing it this particular way simply because i don't have a ac refrigerant machine which is why i don't ever really do ac work because i don't have the appropriate tool which is you know pretty expensive unit you know to get ac refrigerant in and out evacuate it you know to install it put the exact pounds down to the you know 0.1 of an ounce whatever it may be i don't have that i'm not investing in it so you know i'm simply doing this because it's my vehicle but typically i don't get into ac work because i can't recharge the system i do have a good friend of mine that has a shop um, and he does have the appropriate ac uh, machine that we need so once this is all done he's going to pull a vacuum on it and get it recharged for me but you know for the time being i am going to be doing this install and we do have to oil it prior okay so really in our case because we're replacing the compressor and the condenser we really need to refill the whole system you know this has all been evacuated there is really virtually no oil in the system how i'm going to do it in a typical rule of thumb is you put half of the total capacity in the compressor and then the other half somewhere else so in our case the total capacity is 5.1 so we're probably going to put about 2.6 to 3 ounces in the compressor now if you note here the compressor does come pre-filled and some people you know rock out with the pre-filled uh pag oil you know some people just take this pop it right on the car and go about their day so it says this compressor contains 3.4 ounces of pag 46 oil all right but if you look here with the paperwork that even came with this compressor it does say drain all the oil from the new compressor you know dispose however you know the law is and then you know you need to open up the drain uh let all the oil out and then it says install half of the oil charge into the compressor like i just mentioned and then the re remainder throughout the system which is what we're going to do and then it says you know turn the uh you know compressor clutch so that it goes through revolutions to get the oil going in th you know through the compressor okay so i'm going to drain the oil that's already in here so we're going to drain the current oil we're going to see what we get see if it does come out to 3.4 and then we're going to basically base our decision and you know proceed forward from that all right so let's get this thing drained see how much pag oil is in it currently and then we're going to set this up put the oil in it and get everything set up all right so let's get into that now all right guys now you can drain the uh, old compressor too to get an idea of what was in it um, i am not because i lost a good amount right there when i took it out like an idiot so that's on me so that would be a nice other you know form of measurement to get an idea what was in it prior you can drain it see what was in it drain it see what's in this and you can kind of get an idea of what's in both just to help you you know get an accurate measurement on what you want to put in it but you know even as the manufacturer suggests of this compressor we are going to drain the existing 3.4 ounces of pag oil in it so what i have here is just like you know a regular pyrex uh, measuring cup you know nothing crazy nothing fancy i do wish it had a little bit more uh numbers on there for a little bit more accuracy but it's okay we can figure it out we're gonna have to do a little mathing but that's all right so what we're gonna do is go ahead and drain this new compressor so this is a drain plug right here it is a 14 mil got a 14 mil here on impact got that taken out 
And what I'm going to do is simply just turn that drain plug into our uh, measuring cup here. So I'm going to put the camera down, let you guys get a you know better view of it so I can have both of my hands and you can see what we're doing. All right, guys, so we got our drain plug off. Let's see if we get anything out here. And nothing yet. You do want to turn the clutch to help alleviate some of it out. There we go. All right, we got some of that draining out here. Very, very minimal amount, though. It's almost nothing. So, if you look at the compressor, there's a 10 mil in the middle of it. If you turn that clockwise, which would be tightening it, it should help get some of this out. So, I'm turning it. That's how you get the revolution spinning on this thing really was thinking more would come flowing out of this it's either we're not getting it out or there's not 3.4 in here like they said because this is not a lot at all I mean, this is driblets all right we're not getting anything out of this drain plug guys i'm going to put this thing back in and then from there, I'm going to try to remove the, uh, you know, covers on the high and the low side inlets. And we're going to see if we can get some out that way. All right, guys. So I put the drain plug back in. I did put a new green O-ring on there because I didn't like the one that was on there. It was kind of smashed. So I put a new green O-ring on the drain plug, put it back in. So I'm going to turn this bad boy around to our inlet of the flexible hoses. And what I'm going to do is fire these uh, caps off that are on here. And we're going to see if we can drain it from the inlets and the outlets here. So there's one. Let's get the other one. Wish it would come out with that thing. There we go. All right. So let's see if we dump this now, if we're going to get any out. I don't think there's much in here guys I'm trying to spin that clutch there just did it with the impact and there's not a drop coming out of this thing that's crazy so this is supposed to have 3.4 ounces of oil in it and we got a couple drops that's it literally nothing out of this so um i don't think there's oil in it in my opinion maybe i'm crazy but um you know we should be getting oil out of one of these you know spots whether it be the uh openings here for the hoses or you know be the drain plug something here should give and give us some oil and i'm not getting any oil so i'm gonna try to crank this a little more here on the clutch and I'll see if I can get anything but it's not looking promising guys nothing I'm getting absolutely nothing out of this thing there's not even a drop coming down on the inner parts of this compressor so there's no way this thing has 3.4 ounces in it there's no way no way I'm sitting here turning the clutch. I did it with an impact. I'm turning the clutch with a socket wrench. I mean, if there was anything in this, it would be coming out by now. Most definitely. If there's 3.4 ounces, just simply turning this over should have let some of it out. Really, you should only have to turn the clutch to let the remaining, you know, drops and, you know, point whatever come out. But this is literally nothing coming out of the drain plug or the, you know, two hose inlet and outlet there. So guys i do not believe there is the oil amount that they said is in this so this is more of a reason to check double check see what you get out of it and then you know put whatever you you know need to put back in it so there's nothing in this guy so um i'm gonna mess with it for you know another minute or so just to be 100 percent. but i see no way that there's 3.4 ounces of oil in this thing guys so i'll check back in in a second and then we'll get this thing filled up all right guys so if you can see the setup here i've been here for about 10 minutes and I got a few more drops out and you can see it's kind of dripping right there 
but um i mean there's nothing in here i mean i'm fighting to get those drips out i've just been taking my socket wrench turning it clockwise so tightening it and trying to get that to you know drain out whatever it can and i've been doing this consistently 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 and it's nothing coming out guys i mean there's it's barely even covering the bottom of this uh, measuring cup there's like nothing in there guys so i don't i'm convinced there was not 3.4 ounces in this thing and this is you know like i said been sitting upside down like this for 10 minutes it would definitely be draining more than this at least an ounce or two out if there was you know anything in this so we've gotten about as far as we can get with it you know so i think we got about everything out so let's go ahead and get this thing filled up with some oil all right so we got nothing out of this compressor as far as the oil is concerned like we mentioned it says it has 3.4 ounces of pag 46 i uh you know cracked the drain plug which i believe is a drain plug right there at the bottom i cracked that we got nothing out I uh, took out the caps off of the high and the low side here. We drained it in here and we got, you know, a few drips out. So really nothing was coming out of this. I do believe this right here is the fill port. So, um, you know, that is on the top of the compressor. This is the top if we're looking at it. So that is the fill. And I believe the one on the bottom is the drain. But like I mentioned, even if there wasn't, some compressors don't come with fills or drain plugs. So you should be able to drain all of the fluid out of the hose inlet and outlet here so there is no reason that we shouldn't have got more oil out of this thing so i already cleaned this thing up so we can measure our new oil and get new oil into this thing okay guys so i'm just going to dump the oil right into the uh low side here so the low side is the suction side you want to put it in the larger one so the intake which is suction also known as the low side is the big one the smaller one is the discharge, which is the high side. So I'm going to be pouring the oil into the intake side, which is our suction low side. And, you know, you can always pretty much verify this because the bigger one is going to be the low side. So um, we are going to be filling up the PAG oil, PAG 46, through the suction hole there. And this kit did come with some PAG 46. All right, so this is 8 ounces came with it we're just going to utilize that so i'm going to get a funnel set up and we're going to go ahead and get our oil into this new compressor all right guys time to add some oil into this new compressor i even just turned this thing upside down for another 15 minutes just try to triple check and just ensure that everything was out of it i got a few more driblets and that was it there was not anything close to what they said as far as oil in this and you know virtually had nothing and so um, you know, obviously we need to add oil. Like I mentioned, it did come with PAG oil. So this is the UAC PAG oil that it came with, PAG 46. And as you can see here, I have a food scale and I have our measuring cup right here. Um, this only goes, well, I should say it starts at four ounces. It's going to be a little hard to get that accurate measurement. So I think with this measuring cup and a scale, we should be able to get close to what this needs and, you know, get an accurate measurement as far as the ounces are concerned. So let's turn this thing on. Um, and what I decided to do, I'm just going to do two and a half and two and a half um, as far as adding the oil. So I'm going to do two and a half into the compressor. So two and a half ounces in the compressor of oil. We're going to put two and a half and somewhere else in the system, which I'll review once we get to that point. But for now, we're just going to be doing the compressor and putting our 2.5 ounces in. So here is the oil. And you can see she's creeping up about right there. Yeah. It's going to be hard to get it perfect, but I'm going to try. Uh, one more drop probably. Yep. Perfect, guys. 2.5. Look at that. And even on that measuring cup, it's pretty close to four. So um, it would have been kind of hard just to scale it off of this. Maybe if you have a smaller measuring cup, you can do it. Um, but with a food scale, made it pretty easy. We're at 2.5. So let's go ahead and get this poured up. All right. So we got our 2.5 ounces measured up. I got a funnel here. We're going to put this in the larger side, like I said. So make sure you put it in the larger one. And we're going to go ahead and fill this bad boy up with oil. So I'm just going to be pouring it in. From the measuring cup nothing fancy now if you can see it might actually be back flowing into the funnel which is fine that just means we need to turn the um clutch and get that to take it in all right so 
let this drip out here just try to get every drop looks pretty good you see we got a little puddle there at the bottom so i have my impact here with the 10 mil and i just had the old compressor here for leverage to hold that one up but i'm gonna lightly turn it and you can see it goes right down you hear that gurgling that's how you know the oil is going into it all right so pretty good you definitely want to spin this at a minimum of 10 revolutions um to get that going i'm going to spin it now so you can even see on the paper that comes with it um you know install half the oil on the compressor uh turn the compressor shaft eight to ten full res revolutions to ensure the front seal and other internal parts are lubricated so i'm going to spin this out here for a little bit with the impact to ensure it's all in um it just moved on me and the funnel came off but uh i think we're good i'm just going to keep spinning this thing a little bit letting that take that oil in and i'm also going to spin it when it's on the car as well all right so there we go guys got that cycled through and we are good to go all right so we got our 2.5 ounces of pag 46 in the compressor what i want to do is put our um, blocks in here you know the caps back in and the reason we're going to do that is because this is going to have to get contorted all sorts of ways to get back installed and sneak this thing back in so it's a good chance it could spill out so to avoid that i'm simply just going to put that back in my hands are a little oily from the pag oil so i'm going to clean that up and i'm going to put these caps back on and then we can get into putting this thing in the car all right guys here is our compressor capped off ready to go oil in it's ready for install I want to go ahead and get our hoses in now. So this is the high and the low side flexible hoses. We're going to go ahead and get these back installed so that they're ready for when the compressor comes in. And that way it'll be all set up and good to go. So all right, guys, back under the hood here. So I have the low pressure flexible hose here. I'm going to feed it back down where it belongs from this side where the compressor goes. So camera work was probably kind of shoddy on that, but I was holding it while feeding it down there. And obviously our hose falls back a line right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is take out the uh, two paper towels, you know, from each side. And then we're going to go ahead and pop our O-ring in. And then we're going to torque this to spec, this 10 mil. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so I put you down here. So I did put this 10 mil back in just so we don't lose it. And it's in its appropriate spot. All right, so what we're going to do here is pop out both paper towels. So... Pop that one out. We're going to pop the other side out. And we did already replace it with our green O-ring, as you can see. And in addition to that, I did take some brake cleaner on a paper towel and just go around the edge to clean it up. Now, if you see right here in the corner, I have a little bit of the remaining PAG oil, just a little bit, a couple driplets. What you want to do here is go around that O-ring for ease of install so this thing pops right in. Okay, so just lubing it up. Don't need a lot, just putting a very little bit here. And then we can go ahead and proceed to pop this in. Now you should be able to hear it snap in. You just want to get it even and press it down and in just like that, okay? You don't want the bolt to press it in. You need it to be pressed down and installed from pressure so that it doesn't warp and the O-ring doesn't, you know, break its seal and, you know, essentially doesn't seal at all. So we got that situated. Let's get our bolt in. All right, guys, now that we got that popped in accordingly i'm going to finger tight our 10 mil here so i'm just going to get this started by hand here finger tight and then once i get it you know about flush we're going to torque this 10 mil here to spec all right guys so we're going to go ahead and torque that 10 mil to spec there on our low pressure flexible hose now here is a blowout of the refrigeration system okay so you can see it's got the condenser the compressor everything the core and all the lines associated with it and you can see right here that the torque spec is 39 inch pounds so essentially all these connections are 39 inch pounds but you know i am going to go through each one so 39 inch pounds here it's not going to be too past too much past finger tight and there it is that's it we're at 39 right there just a quarter turn of that past finger tight so there we go guys that is locked in 39 inch pounds let's go ahead and get the high pressure hose on now all right guys we're onto this junction right here where the high side met that line right there so I'm dropping in the flexible hose. I'm going to sneak this back over this one as it's intended. Okay, so that's what that, you know, groove is, is to snap that back in like that. So now they're both back in. And what I'm going to do is I did put the 10 mil into this 90 degree hose that goes to the condenser. I'm going to take that out. That is our mount bolt. All right, so you can see right there that is 
what we are going to be mounting this into. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the paper towels from both sides. So that's the capping of the one side. We'll get the paper towels out of the other side. All right, so that's good. Now what we're gonna do is take a little bit more of the PAG oil. We're gonna go around our O-rings here. So it's gonna be a little tight spot here, but should be able to get around it there. All right, I try to get it around them as best as I can, just in case I missed any. I'm gonna put a little bit in the inlets here, right where they pop in. So we got a little bit of oil on both sides and that way it'll make for a good connection here. So there we go, guys, that is good. Now we're gonna go ahead and press this in and it should snap back in and we should be A-OK -okay as far as this uh, hose right here and the O-rings are concerned. So let's see, it's a tight spot, but let's get it. All right, guys, I just got this popped together here at that junction that was, you know, a little difficult. The camera was in my way, so I had to kind of move it. So sorry I didn't catch it on camera, but you kind of just got to get your head in there and see where it's pressing in and that way you can get a good angle on it and get both of those to align and press in and you know push in at the same time so make sure they're both flush push down should be good to go i'm finger tightening our 10 mil in here now and then we're going to go ahead and torque that to spec all right guys i got that thing finger tight so here is the blowout for this o-ring connection point in the ac system this is also 39 inch pounds so Got my torque wrench here locked in, 39 inch pounds. It's gonna probably move, I gotta hold it from the other side, but should be, you know, pretty close to it. Yep. You can kind of hear it hitting the AC line, but it's clicking right. I just hit the camera, my fault, but there we go. That is now torque to spec. So that whole O-ring connection here is good to go for the high pressure hose and uh, we can keep on getting this thing assembled. All right, so now that we got the uh, high pressure hose there and a the low pressure back in their vicinity there, so we should be about, you know, in the compressor area. We can go ahead and install our AC compressor and that way we can go ahead and get those hoses right back in once we get that compressor mounted. So let's go ahead, sneak the new AC compressor in and see if we can get that bad boy installed. All right, guys, new AC compressor filled up with oil. There it is where we're trying to get it in so let's see if we can go ahead and sneak this thing in we'll get our mounting bolts uh you know aligned and we'll get everything adjusted and then torque the specs so let's see if we can sneak our new ac compressor in all right guys i got that jack stand back there i don't know if it's going to help me much but hopefully it'll give me a little bit of uh stability there if i can't get this thing to sit where i want it but um yeah this is the part i was dreading here so let's see if we can get this bad boy in and around this line. All right, I think I got it about snuck in. So what I'm gonna try to do is get this thing oriented from the top and that way it'll kind of let me put it in its original orientation so we can get some bolts in. All right guys, I'm on the top. Hopefully you can see me moving this thing. I think the jack stand actually is coming in handy right now. So there we go. All right, guys, you can kind of see I got that thing in there, relatively anyway. What I'm gonna do is see if I can get it pressed up into its bolt hole orientation here. And I'm gonna try to get one of the bottom bolts started on it here. Remember the shorter bolts for this compressor are the bottom, the longer ones are for the top of the mount. Yep. All right, guys, I got one in. Let's see if I can get it started in that hole there. All right, so what I'm basically doing is just hold it in its mounting position and I'm finger tightening the bolt closest on the bottom to the subframe and it's going in. It's not fun, but it's going in. All right, yeah, I got it. I got it started, guys. So now that I got that started, I'm gonna try to sneak one in from the top. All right, guys, hopefully you can see here, but here is our compressor. I did get the bottom uh, corner bolt in. We're gonna take one of our longer top bolts here. We're gonna go on the opposite corner. So I'm gonna try to get that one in. See if I can do it without hitting the camera a hundred times. This is not the best spot to be working in and recording at the same time, but I think I got it. Yep. I'm going to finger tight that bolt in that I just put in, if you can see it. So we're going to have 
one diagonal from each uh you know started then we'll get the other two in and then we'll get those things tightened down all right so if you can see i got both of those top mounting bolts in they're both started i also have the two bottom ones started all four are started so let's get underneath we're going to get those bottom ones tightened in and then we're going to get these top ones locked in to get this fully mounted all right guys so if you can see there is the two bottom ones they just need to be threaded in so um, I'm going to lock these in with the 12 mil ratcheting wrench I took them out with. So I'm just going to get those tight. Um, if you want to torque them to spec, be my guest. The torque spec is 23 foot pounds. So here's the blowout from the Nissan FSM for the torque spec of the compressor, 23 foot pounds. So I'm just going to be locking them in, like I said. But if you want to torque them, go for it. So I want to go ahead and get these started with a ratcheting wrench and get these locked in. All right, guys, so I'm just getting this thing finger tight in here so we can lock them in. Just make sure the compressor is flush to the block when you're threading these in because if it's not pressed up against the block and flush, they're going to fight you. Um, you know, they need to be perfectly straight and going in straight. So that is the key to that. So I think I got it pretty much to finger tight here. Let's get this thing in on this one here. All right, that one's about there. Let's get this one going. And once you get one flush, they, you know, the compressor should pretty much be flush once you got a bolt almost tight. All right, so this one's going in as well. Feels good. So I'm going to get both of these tightened. And uh, then we'll move to the top and get those two uh, upper 12s locked in. All right, guys, so we got the bottom ones locked in. I'm going to lock in the top ones the same way I took them out. So I used this extendable uh, 3H drive here. With a 12 mil so I'm just going to go ahead and get these snugged in with this 12 mil on a 3 8 drive and then we'll have all four of these 12 mil compressor mounting bolts in and our compressor will be officially back installed part of the car all right so almost there on this one i'll get this one locked in and then i'm going to get that other one and we'll be good to go all right guys we got all four 12 mils locked in so the compressor is now mounted back to the block so we're going to go ahead and get our harnesses connected now so if you remember i just tucked them away up here so i'm just going to put them down here snap in this gray one here first should just lock right back in there we go then we got our black one here it's going to go right over the one on the side and there we go so just make sure those connections are nice and tight, but we have both harnesses now plugged back in. So now we just need to get our hoses plugged back in and the compressor at that point will essentially be fully installed, all right? So here is the high pressure, that's the low pressure. So I'm gonna get both of those caps off so we can install our hoses and then we'll get this all buttoned up. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and get our flexible hoses connected back up here to the actual uh, AC compressor. But one thing we're gonna do here is if you remember, we did take this power steering uh, line here out of this side clamp to get room for that compressor to come out so we can maneuver that line. Just gonna press that back in now. So we got that back oriented, so that's good. Now we can go ahead and move on to getting our two flexible hoses back installed onto the compressor. All right, guys, so if you remember, we took the one coming from the top, which is the low side. We took that one off first, and then the high side went on second, which means it's going to be the reverse. So the high side, the smaller one's going to go in first, and then we put the uh, low side in after. All right, so I want to go ahead and put a little bit of the bag oil right around that uh, o-ring And then we're going to pop that in and then we'll get that thing secured back into the compressor All right guys, I got that pag oil on it I'm going to press that in should snap right into place as it just did get our 10 mil started here I want to get the 10 mil finger tight and then this is going to be 39 inch pounds as well and we'll torque this once we get it finger tight all right guys i got that 10 mil finger tight so on that high pressure hose going to the compressor it is also 39 inch pounds for this 10 mil on that line right there so i got extension set up here with my torque wrench 39 inch pounds you can hear it clicking that's locked in so we got that torque to spec and now we can get the low pressure hose in all right guys you can see we have our high pressure hose all mounted up torque to spec good to go already in the compressor here is the low side coming right from the top so you can see there we go we just got to get this one popped in to the compressor i want to put a little bit of the pag oil on the o-ring and right in the inside of the compressor for a nice sealed connection and then we'll get that one in as well all right guys got the pag oil on the o-ring and in the compressor for a nice secure connection so that thing popped right back in very easily i'm gonna go ahead and get that 10 mil in 
All right, so I'm gonna finger tight that 10 mil and then we'll torque that to spec. All right, guys, so we got that low side all connected up, finger tight. This is going to be the same deal as every other connection here. It's gonna be 39 inch pounds. So here's the blowout, you can see 39 inch pounds. So torque wrench locked in, 39. Let's get this torque to spec. And there we go, guys. All right, and how I got to that, just for reference, is I used this long 12 inch so foot long quarter drive and i also had a 10 inch on my torque wrench so a 10 inch and a 12 inch to get down there with ease and i had all the extension in the world to get to both of those accurately all right so both of those now locked in 39 inch pounds so we have the compressor essentially fully installed all right guys so you saw we got the new compressor fully installed so now we got to get the condenser in all right so here is the old condenser we do have to do some transferring of parts from this old one to this new one okay so if you notice here it doesn't have that uh sensors right there installed on the new one so we're going to take that off first this is a 24 mill i'm going to crack that thing loose and hopefully we should go ahead and be able to get this bad boy out and off so let me go ahead and work this out and then we'll get this thing installed on the new one all right guys got that thing broken free as you can see it's coming out so what i'm going to do is put a new green o-ring on this bad boy and then we're going to get installed in the new one. All right, guys, I got that uninstalled and I got the new green O-ring on there. So we're good as far as that's concerned. So on this new one here, it just has a bolt there. So they didn't include it with it, of course. They just put a bolt in there. Now this bolt is a 14 mil on this particular uh, condenser. So I just got a 14 mil here on the impact. Fire that right out. Now we want to get this thing in here immediately. So, let's get that in. All right. And then we're just going to put a nice snug on it with that 24 mil, and this is going to be installed. All right, guys, I'm just lightly snugging this with this 24. Nothing crazy. Just trying to make sure it's nice and tight, and we got a good connection and seal here with that new green o ring. And that's good. You don't want to overdo it because you can start twisting this whole body off of the condenser and that's the last thing you want to do so that is nice and tight we're good to go all right so we got that installed no issues now if you remember we still have another 2.5 of pag 46 oil that we need to get into this system and typically you know how a system functions about half of it's going through the compressor which is why we got half in and then you got about another half running through the system so this is kind of the mentality behind half in the compressor and half somewhere else a good spot would be to put it in the accumulator or something like that i'm um, trying to get it in this you know dryer is not going to be very easy so i think what we can do is put it on the discharge side um you know that's the opposite from where we really put it in putting it in the high side now on the discharge and that is right where our discharge high side hose comes in to the condenser basically so you know you got it the high hose coming into that little right angle hose and then it goes right into this so what i'm going to do is we're going to take a small funnel i'm going to put it right in that right there and what we're going to do is try to get this filled up with the other uh 2.5 ounces of pag 46 so let's go ahead and see if we could dump this in here and get some of that oil back in here all right guys i got the oil here i'm going to try to do this really slow so hopefully we uh don't overflow it i don't want it to come pouring out where that funnels meet in the condenser here so i'm just going to gradually dump this in here and hopefully we'll have all of our pag 46 back into the system and we should be good for a startup and for this all to function as it should with the appropriate amount of five ounces of oil in there so there we go guys went in perfect we're not overflowing as you can see i'm just going to let this last bit run out into it and we are good for install all right guys new condenser is all ready for installation here and 
as you can see we got nothing overflowing here as far as the 2.5 we put in it so we got the pag oil in this we're good to go so let's go ahead and get this thing installed all right guys we are back at the car just before we throw this condenser and i am going to pull it up to the bottom exactly how we removed it so it dropped out through the bottom i'm going to slide it back up through the bottom but what we're trying to do is those aluminum welded on tabs coming out of the side that help mount this it's going to mount into there there that one right there that upper one and like i said this one is broken off as we saw when we disassembled it that's from this being an accident, it did take an impact here on the uh, driver's side. And 99.9, .9, that's where that uh, broke off and why we don't have it. But this harness will almost essentially keep it in place. And it really wasn't moving at all with that missing prior. So um, we should be good. Just wanted to note where this is sliding in. So I'm going to grab the new condenser. We're going to carefully slide it up, drop it into these tabs, and this should lock it in. And then we'll have the condenser back installed. And then from there, we can go ahead and lock in our last connection right here. All right, guys, I got you in about the best position possible. So what you're going to see is me grab the condenser, slide it up to the bottom, and slide it right back into those tabs. And it'll essentially be back on the car, and then we just have to connect our line. All right, guys, so here it is. I want to carefully maneuver this thing, nagle it on up into its position. Should be horrifically horrible, I'm hoping. Nah, it looks like I'm going to get it in position pretty easy, actually. The hardest part is going to get it in this upper tab on the corner here. Alright guys, there we go. Thing is in, as you can see. So, got the condenser in there. So let's go ahead and get the connection plugged up and our harness. Alright guys, so just want to note, unfortunately, the mount here on the top on the other side broke as well. I tried a crazy glue it back on, it's not happening. This thing is almost too thick, and it, it just, I don't know, it was kind of compromised when it was going in, and it just popped it right off. So, it is what it is. It's still pretty stable. With the connection here, and with this harness here, it's going to keep the top of this, you know, locked in. So, it is what it is. We already were missing one from the accident anyway, so... I really would like it to have it intact and I might try to glue it again, but honestly, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and get this connected up. So we had the paper towels in this as well. I'm going to go ahead and pull these out and then we're going to go ahead and get this connection in. All right, guys. So I got some PAG 46 in these connection ports here. Got it on the O-rings for a nice secure connection. So we should be able to take this thing and work it on over. So let me put the camera down here. Got it between my legs to see if we can get that thing snapped in here. Hoping that this mount, it's almost preventing it from working. I think I might see why they put that uh, new one on there. I don't think this fits with that one. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, it does not. Wow. Alright guys, I think we ran into a hiccup. And the reason why they put a new connector on this from here to there is simply because this will not, this mount is blocking it and won't let me get it in. So um, I think we're going to have to unfortunately put that on. That's probably why they included it because it fits. This one will not. So. All right, guys, they must have manipulated that other little 90 degree that goes to right here. They probably manipulated it to go around their, you know, universal mount that isn't the same as stock. So what's happening is the corner of that mount, you can see, the corner of that mount is hitting that bottom smaller line right there. So it's just not going to work its way in due to that so unfortunately we're just gonna have to fire this 10 back off get that out and put that in and then we should finally be good guys all right guys in order to get this thing out i just had to disconnect the 10 here right there at the top again so we're gonna have to reconnect that of course and you're gonna want to slide it out from this side trying to get it out to, to come out through the bay is impossible but you can finagle it out from here um actually might even be a tight fit between this thing here might have to free it up a little bit pop it out see it should pull out from the top yeah all right 
Let's see here if we can get enough clearance to slide that out. There we go. So just got to maneuver this plastic piece to get it out. Now, if we compare this to the one that came with the UAC, if we're looking at both of them, you can see the orientation of this one is a little bit uh, wider for that fitment versus the one that came with it. So uh, we're going to see if we can get this one to fit, guys, because this OEM one was not working. So this one did come with new O-rings. So... Um, we're just going to utilize them and we're going to sneak this thing back in the same way we took this one out and hopefully we can get that to go ahead and lock in so we can get this thing uh, connected back up and ready to go. All right guys, so I'm going to try to get this thing through here. Shouldn't be horrific, but there we go. Got it. And what I want to do is go ahead and take that uh, plate off with the you know blocks and everything the caps to get that off so then when we get it back through it'll be ready for the connection all right guys so i just slid the back into place and if you see i was able to lock that in i just pressed this right back essentially as i was pressing the uh, condenser back up in this literally almost just fell into place so um definitely has the clearance for this um you know aftermarket weld uh you know bracket that they put on there that tab so um, that's good now. I'm going to go ahead and use the OEM uh, 10 mil. So we're going to get that finger tight. We're going to torque that to spec. And I'm also going to get the connection back up in the bay where that high side meets to this. And we'll get this all torqued back in. All right, guys. Got that connected back up right there with the 10 mil, 39 inch pounds. I didn't record it because of you, you guys already saw me connect that back up. You don't need to see it again. And, you know, going right to our condenser here so this like i said fits so keep it on the uac if you have a condenser that comes with that it's probably a reason they put it on there simply so they could utilize their own tab i don't know why they just wouldn't make a tab that you know maybe was a quarter inch you know higher than this and you can utilize the oem you know right angle 90 degree you know hose right here line right here i mean whatever you want to call it but zero cents so only thing i got to do now is torque this 10 mil here to 39 inch pounds so i'm gonna go ahead and lock that in and then we'll have all our lines connected up and torque the spec all right guys just got an extension here on my 10 mil 10 x 10 inch extension deep socket and we're gonna go ahead and lock that in to 39 inch pounds there it is guys locked in good to go so we got all of our connections here locked in to 39 inch pounds. What I want to do is go ahead and get this other side here on our switch here that we uh, switched over. I'm going to get that plugged up in. So we got to get that harness back on. And there we go. So guys, essentially our entire AC system is back intact. We got the compressor in, the lines in. We got our seals replaced, our O-rings. So we are good. All this is back assembled. Everything is torqued to spec as far as our connection points. We got five ounces of our PAG 46 in here. So the AC compressor and the AC condenser is now fully installed. Now it's just a matter of getting everything buttoned back up and making sure everything works. So let's go ahead and finalize this job. And what we're going to do from here is go ahead and get our belt on. All right. So we got our AC compressor fully installed with all its associated lines as well as the condenser. So everything is back together. We did get this filled up with the five ounces of uh, PAG 46 and if you remember when we did install this I did spin it over 20 revolutions You do want to spin the uh, clutch make sure you're spinning the clutch and not the pulley So this is the pulley you can see that's spinning But you need to spin the clutch in order to get that stuff uh, Spread out and you know rotate it throughout the system. So I want to give it a few more revolutions here I have my 10 mil small on a 3 8 drive now I'm just going to essentially be turning it clockwise, which is tightening it. You can see that clutch is moving. Okay, so I'm going to turn this a few more revolutions just to make sure we got that uh, oil. Oh, I'm off of it there. <laughs> there we go. Just to make sure we got that oil spread out through it. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that belt back on. All right, so I got that rotated a few more times just for safe measure. Now we got our new belt here. We're gonna go ahead and get the belt installed on our belt drive and get all this 
locked in with the new belt i got a gates i like gates belts they're usually pretty good i've never really had an issue with them um the part number is k060563a all right so that is the gates belt i would recommend going with the gates belt i think they're really good all right so that is the gates belt and we're gonna go ahead and get this thing installed now if you remember i have that 3 16 allen in the tensioner so it's already pulled back and that way we can go ahead and get this belt routed over all of our associated pulleys and we can get the belt back on so here is the belt routing diagram for this 25 qr 25 de all right so there we go that is the belt routing diagram if you need it i'm going to go ahead and get this thing back on so i'm just going to start from the top drop it over to alternator and then essentially just work my way down all right so let's go ahead and get this belt back on all right so if we can see here i got the belt back routed all right this is a pretty straightforward and easy belt routing nothing crazy so i didn't feel the need to go through you know the entire process of me installing this belt considering this video i already can tell it's very long um, I do have a belt installation on the channel, so I'll put that in the description if you feel like you need a little bit more insight and process as to installing the belt. But like I said, I started at the top, got it around the alternator, you know, fed it, started rounding around all the corresponding pulleys. I did have to uh, put the breaker bar on and I did, um, you know, move it a little bit more. So I had a little bit uh, more tension off just to sneak it around the crank. But uh, that's essentially how I, you know, got it on, you know, dropped it from the alternator, worked my way down, got it around the crank. So I still have that 3 16 in there. So we're going to go ahead and take that 3 16 Allen out and that'll lock the belt tension in. And then the belt will be installed and we will be good to go. All right, guys, I just remember 17 on the breaker bar. Just make sure the belt looks like it's overall its corresponding grooves and everything looks like it's in place. Looking pretty good there. All right, so... Everything feels fine. Everything looks like it's in its corresponding pulleys. Belt is nice and tight. Tension feels good. Belt fully installed, guys. All right, guys. Belt is installed. So if you can see here, sneak you in. There you go. We got our AC system back intact. We have our belt back on now if you remember and you were watching and paid attention from the beginning of this video the reason that we essentially did the ac compressor is not only because it locked up but it locking up caused a no start condition on this car so when the car was attempting to start the compressor was locked not allowing the belt to turn and it was preventing the crank and everything from spinning over so for me to diagnose it i cut the belt and then when the belt was cut, the car started right up because I didn't have anything restricting it and the belt wasn't preventing the crank and everything from turning over. So this is all back together. And essentially this car should start now, especially now that it has a belt and it's going to have, you know, the alternator keeping it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just the air box in, you know, the front air duct here. I'm just going to push it back in lightly and we're going to go ahead and attempt to fire this thing up, guys. So... We're gonna go ahead, put that air duct in, and then we're gonna start this thing up and see how she's doing. All right, guys, I just dropped the air duct back in just for protection purpose of the air filter and the air setup and all that, so I don't even have it mounted. The bolts are still actually underneath of this. We're simply just doing this for the startup. Just wanna make sure that it's on point before we decide to get this all back buttoned up, all right? So we have this back in for protection purposes. Everything looks good. And I think we're about ready to start this up. So I'm going to put the camera down. I think I'm going to leave you guys in the engine bay. And uh, I'll go ahead and start this thing up and we'll see where we're at. All right, guys. I actually got you set up right here at the compressor and the belt drive. So I'm going to go attempt to turn this thing on and we'll see what we got here. back let's take a look here um sounds great this hasn't sounded like this in a while <laughs> so i'm definitely happy with how she sounds um let's take it up to the engine bay here see the belt's good sounds good i don't see any issues as far as our AC is concerned and the car actually starts now considering we don't have a frozen pulley and the car can turn over so <laughs> that's always nice right 
There we go, guys. She's running. Everything looks good. Our AC system is fully intact. So, I do believe we solved our AC compressor issue. Now, the system is going to need a um, vacuum pulled on it probably for a good hour and uh, definitely going to have to recharge it. But we got the oil going through it. As you saw, we put it all in. So, I'm going to take this directly to my friend who has his own shop and he has the AC machine that is, you know, refrigerant machine that's needed to get this accurately charged with the correct amount. Um, do not fill this with cans. There is a specific amount that this car takes. So if you look right up here, that is the air conditioner uh, tag under the hood. It should have 1.16 pounds. That should be exact. If you just throw cans in there, you're not going to get this exact amount, guys. So please. Don't use the cans from Walmart. Go get this properly filled and you'll thank me. Honestly, if you have not enough Freon, it'd probably work better than overfilling it with uh, all those stupid cans, all right? So get it done correctly. But looking good, guys. We obviously solved our no start issue. Car is running, so that was the issue. The belt was simply locked because the compressor, uh, you know, locked up and the crank couldn't turn. So car can turn over now and is running as it should. All right, guys, so we have determined that this thing runs and we got our AC system all back together. The car starts, sounds good, sounds better than ever and better than it has in a long time. So um, essentially, we just have to reassemble this bad boy. So, you know, we got to get that horn mount bar back assembled, um, you know, the front bumper cover back on, the lower splash guard, inner splash guard, fender liner, um, all of the above. But, you know, like I said, we did determine that this thing uh, actually works. It's good. Belt's turning. Everything is fine. Um, just for the sake of this video's length, because I already know it's going to get long. You know, I would I typically like running through the job from the complete start to finish. But um, at this point, you know, we reviewed everything as far as the AC system's concerned. Like I mentioned, it needs to get charged. So I'm going to take it to my friend who's going to pull a vacuum on it and then refill it with refrigerant, of course. So I'm going to do that immediately. But other than, you know, refilling the system, this is it. It's done. Um, you know, it's really just the opposite of removal. So everything that we took off, we're just going to put back on. So I'm not going to go through putting the bumper back on, all the splash guards and all that on. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If you're able to take it off, it's kind of straightforward how to put it back on. So for the sake of this video's length, we're just going to stop here. But I do just want to mention to make sure you get this power steering line back. In its orientation so turn these clamps back around and get it mounted back to the subframe here so in and then got that in guys so that is back where it needs to be ac compressor installed all of our lines are good we got the belt installed so we're good to go so I hope this helped with some insight as to replacing the AC compressor, the AC condenser, and overall just servicing the AC system on your 5th gen Ultima. Make sure you stay tuned because you never know when I might be wrenching on this thing again. And until next time, guys.